Campus View Club here at the Peterson Events Center for the Jeff Capel Show. My name is Jeff Hathorn. Panthers in Louisville coming up at noon on Saturday. Big weekend for the Panthers and a lot of excitement. Jeff, what are some of the things that you guys have been working on this week to get prepared for Saturday? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, a disappointing loss the other night. Um, we were off on Wednesday. So the league this year, most of our conference games are Saturday, Tuesday. They've always been Saturday, Wednesday, so we've normally been off Sunday, can practice Monday and Tuesday, and then get ready for Wednesday. So yesterday was our off day, so today was our first time getting back together. And we, you know, reviewed North Carolina, some of the things we did well, some of the things we didn't do well. And I thought one of the big things was that we have to do a better job of moving the basketball. I thought we became very stagnant offensively and it turned into a little bit of just trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. And we're not built to do that. I thought early in the game, we played so hard. You know, we held them scoreless for six minutes. And during that first six-minute stretch, Jeff, we probably had six to seven wide-open shots where it was 6 nothing. It should have been 15 to nothing. Yeah. Um, and I thought we allowed in the second half – our inability to make shots, that frustrated us. And it came from a space of guys wanting to help and wanting to do more, but we have to realize that we have to do more, not I have to do more. What's it like as a coach to show that film and then to see the guys looking at it? They probably have an idea of what they thought happened, and then they're watching that like, wow. <laughs> well, you know, I can tell you from experience, from being a player myself back in the day, you, you, you always think that, you know, and then there's a saying that coaches have, film doesn't lie. And you can think you're playing really hard, and then you see that, hey, I am just standing. You know, I'm not blocking out. You know, I'm, I'm not cutting, or I'm cutting when I shouldn't cut. Um, and so the tape doesn't lie, and it's one of the reasons we try to watch a lot of tape with our guys, watch us to try to – so they can see themselves and – see the areas that we need to improve in. And one of the one of the many sayings that Mike Tomlin has is he likes the phrase football justice, that if you continue to work hard, there will be justice as a reward. Do you kind of feel like with the <laughs> way you guys have been you've been fighting that there's going to be basketball justice for I your team? I hope so. You know, I, I learned this from my college coach. He, he always referred to it as the basketball gods. They reward you or they break you. And for us – you know, when I look at our last three games, IPFW before Christmas, Syracuse, and then North Carolina, I think we have defended incredibly well. I think uh, if you look at the, that three-game stretch, teams are under 40% from the field against us. North Carolina was averaging 86. We held them to 70. We gave up a dunk late just in transition trying to press. Um, I, I think our first shot defense has been really, really good. We just haven't been as good offensively like we had been all year. I, and like I told our guys, like if we continue to defend at that level and concentrate and lock in there, and we can still have some improvement there against North Carolina in the first half, they had 31 points. Ten of them came on under out of bounds. Well, we had been outstanding in that all year. Um, if you know, But the thing that has to happen offensively is that we have to get back to moving it and player movement, ball movement. That's when we're at our best instead of just – you know, trying to go one-on-one -on -one or trying to do things ourselves, we have to get back to the ball having energy. And when it does, we'll make shots. Do you feel like when things do go wrong, especially with the younger team, that then the pressing starts and then it just, it just spirals? No, no question. And I think one of the big things is, look, Blake Henson's our best player, and he struggled. And I think when he struggles – and this was one I told him during the, during the game. I said it during one of the timeouts. Right now, all of you guys are inward. Like you're you're thinking about you. I'm not making a shot. I, I can't believe I'm missing this shot. And what has to happen is that you need to be outward. And I had a long talk with Blake today just about that because one of the things that he gives us all the time is positive energy. Blake is a guy that's loud. He's You always hear him when he's around. He's just positive. And, you know, I think he feel, felt like in the North Carolina game, and it's an extension of Syracuse, that he's letting us down. And because of that, he was extremely quiet during the North Carolina game, especially in the second half and huddles. And he can't be that way. He has to be that same positive, high-energy guy all the time. 
And I really believe if he does that, he'll make shots because he won't be thinking about, man, I'm letting the team down. I'm letting Coach down. I'm letting Bub and Jalen down or the rest of these guys. And so you can't be inward. You know, there's a thing, and again, I go back to all the lessons I learned from my college coach. One of the reasons, I remember when I was a freshman, you know, when he's talking, you, you got to talk. You know, you got to talk on deep. You got to talk on the court. I'm like, talk about what? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, I'm calling the play. I'm, right. you know, whatever. But what he was trying to say is like, let's say if you're tired, right? And if you're thinking about I'm tired, then that's what you're thinking about. If you're talking like, hey, I got your help. I got your help over here. Screen coming or whatever. What are you not thinking about? Being tired. You're thinking about helping someone else. And so it's different things that you can do to try to trick your brain into – thinking positive. And so that's where you have to be outward. You have to be totally immersed into the game and you can't be, well, I'm doing this. I'm not, I'm, you know, whatever. And so that's where we have to get better. We do have a young team and, you know, we, when we played at Syracuse, we started four guys that that was their first time ever playing in the carrier dome, you know, cause Guillermo didn't play up there last right. year. Right. Um, Jorge did, but yeah, yeah, Guillermo did. yeah, Guillermo did. And so, you know, that's something for me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be patient with and understand, but at the same time, you know, we're close, and that's my thing. I think we've played – I do think we've played two of the best teams in our league in Clemson and North Carolina. I think Syracuse is good, and in each game late, we're right there. We have a chance. We just have to be able to sustain the discipline, um, have, have, have stamina to be able to lock in you know, for 40 minutes of what we have to do to win. You sometimes feel like a father trying not to swear. <laughs> like, it's like, mm, mm, you want to say, but you know that you have to have to <laughs> let them grow. You have to let them grow, you know, and, and you do. And, again, I, I still – I love my team. I do. I do. And I love how we're fighting and I love how we're together. It's just these few things that we have to – we have to cross that bridge. That's what we have to do. We have to have a breakthrough in, in our league. You know, we did it in the non-conference. We did it at West Virginia. But we have to be able to do it in this league um, where we can put together and sustain 40 minutes of high-level play. All right, coming up, it's a name that you will hear chanted by the Oakland Zoo often over the span of a year, and something really cool happened to this guy today. He's a big part of this team. You may not know – he may not be a household name, but I bet you recognize that name. Uh, we're going to talk to him when we continue on the Jeff Cable Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And we are at the GBU Life Campus View Club here. The Panthers take on Louisville Saturday, 11.30 pregame, noon tip here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And you might hear at, the end, at times in games, K.J. Marshall. <laughs> K.J. is joining us because you're a zoo favorite. You get to hear your name. And I, I know you've got a special relationship uh, with the student section here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, ever since I first got here, uh, I run with them all the time in Towers. And, I mean, they just became like Sega family to me. You know, I'm eight hours from home, and, I mean, I'm the youngest of six. So, you know, it's a lot of us, you know, at home. So, uh, you know, they just provided, like, another sense of family to me. And ever since I've been here, we always had, like, a deep bond. The youngest of six? Youngest of six, yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy. Dude, how crazy was it growing up? Uh, it wasn't bad. I mean, when you're the youngest, you know, you get your way most of the time. So, <laughs> Did you get away with stuff, too? I got away with everything, like <laughs> – yeah, <laughs> everything. How old were you when you figured that out? Like, were you pretty young? Early as I can remember. I mean, as soon as I figured that out, I, I learned how to capitalize on everything. So were you the little brother that tagged along, like wanted to go to all, everything your, your siblings were doing? Well, that or if I wasn't able to go, I would just sabotage it for them to the point where they couldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, no wonder. Well, we'll talk about that later. Hey, you had something really special happen to you today team put you on scholarship congratulations Thank that's you. awesome right yeah. how did it tell us tell me how you found out how it happened so today uh I, well i want to say a few days ago i hurt my hand pretty bad uh like a minor fracture so i wasn't really practicing much but uh you know i realized that we needed a kind of like a different look for louisville so i just told da to wrap my hand kind of extra so uh like i, I could still participate and try to simulate the way some of the things that, like, the Louisville guards do and whatnot. So I was out there and was trying to be as energetic, you know, as I could. Um, just, you know, trying to be me each and every single day. So uh, after practice, you know, coach sit us down, and, you know, he's, you know, teaching us, like, a, like another life story about, you know, just trying to be unselfish and just providing anything that you can, you know, to help the team win. And, um, you know, 
like we go to break the huddle down. He's like, J-Lo, go break the huddle down. And before he, you know, like J-Lo starts, um, yeah, he starts telling the guys about how, um, you know, each and every single day how, you know, I, I come and bring a spark and, you know, I try to be unselfish as, as much as I can, and, you know, in the role that I have. And um, just by how you, how you appreciate, you know, like the things that I do on a day-to-day basis. So I, honestly, I wasn't listening too much. I was in the back <laughs> playing around like I normally do. And then um, he was like, Jayla, break the huddle down. So I went to go put my hand up. And he was like, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, catch your own scholarship. I really didn't hear it at first. I'm just, ah, <laughs> then I realized what he said. I'm like, oh, I want scholarship. I got to call my mom. So, yeah, that, that, that's kind of how I So take out. us through that conversation with your mom. Um, you know, uh, you know, she was at work. I kept FaceTiming her. And she's like, boy, you know, I'm at work. I can't answer the phone. I'm like, mom, you got to <laughs> answer the phone. Like, you know, she was like, your hand. And I was like, yeah. So I heard the FaceTime her. She's like, boy, what happened this time? I'm, you know, I was like, well, first, mom, how's work going? You know, and we get to talking. And I was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm on scholarship. And she just broke down. And she was crying. Aww. And she was congratulating me on, like, how hard I work for it. Because, you know, like, she know, like, the, how hard, uh, you know, like it was to get here. You know, she knows how hard I work each and every single day. And then after that, I had to call my dad. You know, my dad, he's, like, my number one critic when I'm not coming to practice providing energy. So, <laughs> yeah, I had to call him second. And it was a... Uh, I'm, I'm glad you asked now, not earlier. Earlier, I would have very had an emotional answer. I kind of got out of tears and all the emotions out now. I could just smile and sit back and think about it. But, yeah, that's kind of how it went earlier. That's really cool. That, that's that's awesome, Matt. And your mom's a little angel who's never done anything wrong. Exactly. Gets on scholarship. At, you provide so many things that maybe the public doesn't see. You mentioned your role, like providing energy. How intentional are you to make sure that, hey, we got to be ready. We got to do warm ups right. Take us through like your mindset going into a game or or even in practice. Uh, you know me. You know I just try to just lose myself in the moment each and every single time I'm I'm in this arena. I'm in any gym. You know with the team. You know I understand like I don't have the role. I go out there and play 40 minutes a night. But all my dirty work that I do behind the scenes, you know I take very much serious you know, seriously. Um, you know you guys any of the guys. You know I play around more than anybody on this team. Always got a smile on my face. But a lot of that is just because I just enjoy being here. So I try to remind everybody else around here that, you know, times may not be going great all the time, but you still got to enjoy, like, what's in front of us. I mean, not everybody gets to play at, at a university like this where the resources are phenomenal. Uh, the people who work behind the scenes are all phenomenal. So I try to put a smile on everybody's face. But, you know, once we get in between the lines, you know, all the jokes, you know, I still have a lot of jokes, but I do get a lot of you – know, I do get serious real quick, you know, especially when there's a serious thing at hand, too. You've known Coach Capel for a while, haven't you? How did, when, when did you guys first meet? Um, well, this is an interesting story. We talked about this, I want to say, about, uh, I think it was like last week. Uh, so back in eighth grade, um, I played on the varsity team, and uh, we had the number one point guard in the country. And this is back when he was at his old school. And um, he used to come down at any chance he could to come down and recruit him. I mean, he was that good of a player. And um, let's say one particular Thursday, I was in the principal's office for something I did not do. Let's go ahead and get that out there first. Yeah, and then... Um, I had kind of snuck out the principal's office for a second, and I went up to him, and I was like, you don't need to be here for him. You need to be here for me. You know, I don't know who's going to play for you one day. And he's like, who is this bad kid just <laughs> coming up to me telling me I'm going to play for him one day? And um, I just feel like ever since I've been 13 years old, i kind of just been committed to him. I mean, I'm a man of my word. I mean, I'm here today, you know, but uh, yes. And then uh, I, all throughout high school, you know, he would come to a lot of our AU games, and um, recruiting some of my best friends, and the next thing you know, like we just started a bit of a relationship stronger and stronger and stronger. Next thing you know, I was here. KJ, we're going to talk to Jalen and also to Bub. What have those two brought to the program, or what do you want to try to leave them, leave them with uh, before you're done here? Well, first, I went, ooh, I could talk all day about them too. You know, I, I've always been the youngest, so I never had little brothers. So uh, just having them around all the time, but um, they've been nothing but a blessing to me, but a blessing to this program also. I mean, I feel like they pr- like provide a different source of energy, a different sort of spark that you just you that you just can't get from any, everybody. Um, one thing that I hope I can just leave to them is just enjoy the moment while you can. I mean, for me, I feel like this time flew by kind of fast. And personally, I mean, I just feel like they have all the tools and the tangibles it takes to get to the next level. I just want them to enjoy the time that they have here and just embrace everybody that you meet along the way. Um, you know, I'm the guy here. I take the smallest things and I try to turn them into the biggest things possible. You know, each and every single relationship that you can make in, in, at the school and within the city, I just feel like I just want them to cherish, you know, t- and treat every bond and treat everything and every small thing and big thing with the same level of respect. And uh, outside of that, I mean, 
I mean, we continued our 3 a.m. you know pizza hut runs and all that you know <laughs> those are my guys you know and you know i mean i'm always over there doing laundry even though i didn't get my laundry over there. you know it's, it's all in the living room but you know, those, you know like those are my little brothers man so i just want them to continue to do what they do um there's not much advice i can give them i feel like they're already on great paths to do you know great things so whatever's next is whatever's next the newest scholarship Pitt Panthers guard, K.J. Marshall. Congratulations. Thanks for joining us. I, we're going to hear from Jalen a little bit more, especially how he likes this weather. It's a beautiful day here in Pittsburgh today. Oh, yeah, he's very <laughs> proud with that. Jalen's going to join us next week. Continue on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And we're at the GBU Live Campus View Club here at the University of Pittsburgh at the Peterson Events Center. We are joined by freshman Jalen Lowe from Houston. Glad we could bring you some good weather here. You got to get used to this, man. This is this is what we're about up here. Man, it's it's freezing right now. I, <laughs> I I'm trying to get used to it, but it's hard. Uh, you know, we you just heard KJ was on. What was that moment like for you guys to see him get a scholarship? Man, it was it was amazing. So we're breaking the huddle, just saying our little things. Coach had to add on a little stuff about KJ. He was like, yeah. KJ brings energy for us. You know, KJ's that guy that really picks us up. Then when he said that KJ's also on scholarship, man, we went crazy. It was a, like, I know it's a great feeling for him, but, man, to see him in that moment right there, it almost made me tear up because I'm just so happy for that guy. That's, like, that's my, like my older brother. I mean, he's accepted me ever since I stepped on campus, and it was amazing to see that for him. What do you respect about what he does for your team? KJ is that guy that we look to lean on in bad times. I mean, KJ's always that spark plug. Like you said, he brings the energy. You, you can count on KJ at all times, no matter what's happening, if good and bad. You know KJ's there, uh, being his normal self, being outgoing for us. And that's what we really count on KJ for at all times, and we know he's going to be there for us. What's your first couple of months of college basketball been like? I mean, it's been a whirlwind. I mean, it's – it's been great so far. I've enjoyed it a lot. I'm getting accustomed to it. I mean, I'm, I love this sport, so, I mean, I'm around it all the time. I just try my best to indulge myself into the sport and give everything I have right now and just deal with everything as it comes, just being a freshman, knowing how, how there's going to be ups and downs, but I just deal with it as it comes, and I just enjoy this for the moment right now. It feels like the just by looking at that the game has slowed down a little for you. Do you, do you kind of feel that, like like you've had some games under your belt, it, it's slowing down for you? Um, I wouldn't say it's just slowing down. I just feel more comfortable. I'm just playing more of my game out there, you know, trusting, trusting my work, my teammates, trusting me on what to do. And, I mean, it's just been great. I mean, I'm just trying to go out there and help my teammates, help the team just provide anything that they need in order to win. What's basketball like in Houston? Basketball is great, man. The competition down there is amazing. You have uh, kids all over the city. Texas is a big state, so we got we – got, it's, it's all basketball, and we love that. It's, it's very competitive down there. I know Baltimore guys are proud of their basketball, D.C. guy. Like, how much do you, you guys – you guys talk about that a little? Yeah, we've definitely uh, had the talk. Uh, <laughs> I think we can all agree <clears throat> that uh, Texas basketball is better. Uh, <laughs> No, Baltimore is uh, that D.C. area. I mean, it, they have they definitely have some great kids. I don't know too many to come out there, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, Texas basketball is really great. All right, so th for those listening, Bub is, like, right off from where we are right now. And, you know, he's going to get the last word. You, yeah. You know that, right? <laughs> I know he is. Um, you've known Coach Keeple for a while, haven't you? Do you remember how old you were when you first met Coach? Man, I was in seventh grade, I think, when I first – I probably knew of him before then, but I was in seventh grade when I, I think I first remember Coach Capel because um, him and my dad and my godfather, John Lucas, they go back a while, players, recruiting-wise, stuff like that. But when I was in seventh grade, I'm pretty sure I had a, I had a basketball nationals in, a, like, Charlotte or somewhere in North – I was in North Carolina. Okay. But – um. I was like, Dad, I really want to go visit Duke in North Carolina. It's like, as a kid, those were the schools you always looked at. And he was like, oh, I'll see if I know somebody who can, you know, help us get inside, take a look around. He pulled it off somehow, and Coach Capel was the one that uh, took me around Duke while I was up there, showed me everything around, 
on campus and that was the first time that I heard of Coach Capel and stuff like that. But that was like the first time I knew of Coach Capel and that gave me a great who knew? experience. Man, who knew that <laughs> it'd be here today? That's crazy. It it is crazy. It's it's funny how what a small world basketball is. No doubt. Like how many people know people yep. I mean, just across the world, not just across the United States. Yeah, for sure. I mean, basketball is you everybody knows everybody at some point. All right, for parents AAU can be one thing. For you playing it, what was that experience like traveling and, and playing and I mean some of the competition? I mean, I'm just so grateful and blessed to be able to have the opportunity to travel and play AAU basketball. That was some of the greatest moments of my life. I mean, traveling with your teammates, some of your best friends, and just going around playing the sport you love. I mean, what more would you ask for? And to have that and play at a high level in front of college coaches, traveling in places you've never been before, it's like the highest thing that you can do. And I'm so grateful for it. It was some of the best time of my life. You mentioned that your godfather is John Lucas. What do you know about him as a player? I know that he, uh, he, he scored a lot of points with his left hand, and I'm also lefty. So he says, Jalen, any chance you get, use your left hand, because I've only scored two points with my right <laughs> in my career. But I just missed that from him. <laughs> I like using my right hand a lot more too. but. No, I know he was a great player. I mean, YouTube. I, yeah, he he was a really good player. I had to go watch his highlights back in the day because I didn't believe everything he used to say and stuff like that. But no, nah, he was a he was a great player and and coach also. And I admire everything that uh, he instills and has brought for me today. How much is your family, maybe him included, is a sounding board for you to be able to talk about stuff and and know that they understand? I mean, it's great because. Not a lot of kids and players have that background where they can lean on family to have advice for you in certain situations like that. So being able to have family that I can ask for help upon because they've been in my situation before, it's amazing. And I'm just blessed to have them because not a lot of people get to have that opportunity. You meet guys, you text with guys before you come to school. Has this Pitt family been what you thought it would be? No doubt. It's been everything and more. I love these guys to death, man. These guys are great. I have an amazing time and fun time with them every day. They are they are my brothers for life. I love everybody around here. All right, before we let you go, because Bub's going to get a chance for last word, and uh, is there anything you want to tell us about Bub? Bub's a, Bub's a terrible kid. Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> now, nah, Bub's, that's, that's my roommate right there. That's my brother. I came up on campus with him at the same time. Uh, Bumped heads in AAU basketball a little bit. He'll probably tell you about that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's my guy right there. We do everything together. I mean, he's he's been with me since day one, and I got nothing but love for that guy. He's a great player, phenomenal person. And, th yeah, I can't say anymore. That's my brother right there. All right, Jalen, good luck at Louisville. Yes, 12 o'clock on Saturday. When we continue, Bub Carrington will join us here on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Thank you. And we are joined right now by freshman guard Bub Carrington here at the GBU Life Campus View Club here at the Peterson Events Center. Uh, you guys really see, I mean, there's some chemistry, some natural chemistry. What, what's, what's your experience been like with your new teammates? Um, great. I say no, nothing bad to say about my teammates. I definitely love this team. I feel like we definitely mesh well together. Definitely got, you know, like a certain, like just a, like an energy that we have with each other. It's just... It's always good vibes, I feel like, with everyone. I feel like no one is, just has a bad character. I feel like this is definitely one of the better teams I've ever been on. You mentioned energy. Obviously, KJ is a guy that provides that. I, wanted, I, I got Jalen's. I want to get your thoughts on what that was like today when you guys found out uh, that he was on scholarship. It was definitely amazing. I mean, and it, and it, it was like a, like a vibe shifter because today's – well, at least for me, you know, I kind of had, I was kind of in my head a little bit about the games, you know, and everything. So I was kind of letting that carry over. But as soon as coach mentioned that, it was just like, it wasn't about me. You know, it's, it's never just about me. He br brought up Cage and everything and everyone, everyone just got happy again. It was just like great vibes, you know. How, t how tough is it? I mean, I mean, you can, you start off with a triple double in a way, maybe, oh, this is, this is easy. I'm not saying that you were thinking that. <laughs> But, you know, teams find out that all of a sudden they're, they're uh, we're going out to stop you. Like, how, what has this process been like here through the first 13 games? Uh, I would say it's just a learning experience. I feel like, you know, 
it's basketball. You know, people are going to have good games, people are going to have bad games. But it's it's a great basketball player to, you know, put all that behind you, good game or bad game. It's about winning the next one. And I feel like that's the mindset I kind of have to have. It's just like, no matter what I do, 0, 20, don't matter what I do, I got to win the next game. And I feel like that's definitely the part of my game where I got to grow and I feel like I'm beginning to grow. Your your, team, your roommates, right, with, with Jalen, mm-hmm. you guys can chop that up, like – do you have a, can you guys talk about that kind of stuff? Do you have that type of relationship? For sure. Yeah. And we, and we even, you know, talk to each other about the stuff we do good, the stuff we do bad. Cause, and coach tells us this all the time. Like, it's never personal. Just hold each other accountable. Hold yourself accountable. And, you know, you're going to have a great team. I had a chance to meet your dad uh, in, in Syracuse, and he's been here a lot. What's it been like to have your father be a part of this experience so far? Uh, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't amazing. You know, I definitely – I appreciate it. You know, I'm definitely grateful for it, especially because he's been there. I mean, he, you know, taught me what basketball was. So I've been around basketball my whole life solely because of him. So my mom definitely wasn't no basketball player. So I would say it's it's definitely been amazing just to have him here, you know, just, you know, still give me little tips, you know, here and there. Just, you know, he's always just going to be supportive. And that's definitely a great feeling. So we learned early on that Carlton, no, 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 it's Bub. Like, how long have you, and, but dad is Bub. How long have you been little Bub? Has that kind of been a thing your whole life? Yeah, until about like a year ago. And now I'm big Bub. It's different. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, people can say that, but people know the real now, you know. Yeah. Is your dad a pretty good player? No, not even close. <laughs> he, he could coach for sure. But he was never one to put the ball in the basket, ever, ever. <laughs> like, at what point did you start beating him in the backyard? It it was never, like, a debate, ever. Like, he's not I, – I mean that. Like, he's really not good at basketball. He's, <laughs> but, he, but, he, but he can coach it, though. Like, you know what he's talking about. He just can't go and do it. <laughs> I got you. You know, I, I've, I had a chance to do a couple of other sports here for TV, and I've noticed that you guys have come out to some of the other games, volleyball, um, uh, women's basketball. What's that experience been like just to be a part of and watching some of the other sports and watching them, do, especially the volleyball team, has been ins- was insane this year. Oh, yeah, they were, they, were, uh, they were pretty good this year for sure. Yeah, they were Final Four team. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. They were good. It was, I mean, it's amazing, especially when you got, like, we're showing up, you know, we're going to be live, we're going to be sportive. And then the zoo, I feel like it was just like, you know, this is just a great experience, you know, just out there just supporting someone else from your school that you might not even know. Because, like, in high school, you go and do that. It's like, I just had class with this person. Like, but it's college. You never know these people. It's a lot of people, but you still go out there and support because they wear the same colors as you. I feel like that's definitely a great feeling. Well, speaking of same colors, um, you know to keep it on the down low that you're from Baltimore this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nah, actually, I don't know that. I'm loud and proud of Flock Nation. Ravens oh, winning the Super Bowl. Man. You heard it here first. So Lamar I, Jackson's the best player in the league. I did figure <laughs> this out, though, why you have the number seven. I, I just found this out. That the reason you did is because you grew up and you loved watching Ben Roethlisberger so much <laughs> that you needed to wear the number seven. Is that right? If, uh, if that's what you wanted to be, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> why, why seven? I mean, that's just such an uh, – you know, usually it's five or under. Honestly. Where, where did seven come from? It sounds good when people try to, like, correlated to Melo, and I would say that's definitely a part of the reason. But honestly, I just like the number. Like, I always just like the number seven. So, and I always just kind of fought to wear it. Roethlisberger. N- no. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I just, the number always just kind of, you know, spoke to me. I like the number. So, I, I imagine people in Baltimore have a, a, an impression of Pittsburgh. Yes. Now that you've been here for a little bit and you've seen some of the good, like, what do you tell them that it surprises them about the city? It's definitely not what it seems. You know, I thought, you know, I, nah, I don't want to say this out loud. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's definitely better than what I thought. You know, people, fans, whatever it is, even the school, like, it's just a lot better than what I thought. You know, I feel like Pittsburgh kind of gets a bad rep just for – because it's cold or whatever it is. But I, I definitely appreciate, like, I, I'm i glad that I made the decision to come here. Are you getting so, used to hills? No. I don't think I'll ever get used to that. So I have a scooter. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my first purchases. You got to be careful this time of year, though, with that. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. I think I'm a pro, though. Do you? Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for basketball, 
what would you be playing? Football, 100%. Or did you baseball. ever play? Did you ever play? Mm-hmm. I was, how, how far along? If I was playing football right now, they would have invented people going to high school straight to the NFL. <laughs> I don't understand on that. Where does this confidence come from? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I guess I will. Nah, I'm not going to say that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I was really good at football. My, yeah. Well, you've been really good at basketball. We've enjoyed watching you, and uh, we look forward to more and more from this season. Good luck in Louisville on Saturday. Thank you. Noon tip-off, 1130, here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Bub Carrington joining us here on the Jeff Capel Show. We continue. We're going to talk about the most dynamic player in the game today and what she's done to impact this sport as we continue on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're back here at the Peterson Event Center at the GBU Live Campus View Club. Jeff Hathorne with the head coach, Jeff Capel. You know, Jeff, Blake Hinson has range, and I am not challenging Blake. But Caitlin Clark <clears throat> is an amazing what, – what's it like when you watch highlights of her? Yeah, it is amazing. I mean, I, I remember watching her a couple of years ago, just had a women's game on, Iowa was playing, and I was like, who is this? And then, obviously, the magical run they had in the tournament last year um, and the number of eyes that are on women's basketball now, not just because of her, but obviously what Dawn Staley has done at South Carolina, what the UConn women have done. You look in the WNBA, what those women have done, with USA basketball, our women's dominance there. But, man, Caitlin is just – it's it, it's different. And I had an opportunity to meet her this past summer. We both spoke at – spoke at this thing and she was an amazing young lady just kind of how her perspective on everything you know she grew up there she's a hometown hero and she really understands and takes to heart the impact that she has on little girls around the country certainly there in the state of Iowa but the impact that she has she takes that very seriously she's an unbelievable player I mean, her ability to make shots, but she's a little bit like Steph Curry. What he did to the men's basketball game, she's doing that with, with women's basketball, and I'm really excited to watch her. That shot she hit at the end of oh. the game against Michigan State the other day was incredible. And, and she's not physically imposing like Steph. Yeah. And she's not like <clears throat> overly quick or she's not overly big, but that combination and then the smarts. I mean, smarts, confidence, you know, because you have to – have a lot of confidence to take the, those types of shots because you have to be willing to live with the result, good or bad. And that's the thing. I, she, she's daring, and she's not afraid of the moment, and she's not afraid of the consequence that comes with the moment, whether obviously she made that shot, but if she misses it, you know, I think she's fine to live with it. And that's a talent. I mean, that's, that's a big-time talent when you're not afraid of a moment and you're not afraid of what comes with the consequence of it. She has, and I want to point out this stat, she's played 3,965 minutes, and she has 3,189 points. Yeah, that's incredible. Like, she's within a parameter of nearly a point a minute. Yeah, yeah. And when you can shoot the three like she can, and the way the, you know, their offense opens up, and just it, and it's not just that. I mean, the, the things that she creates like Steph because of her shooting, because you have to guard her out and with the ball screens and – all the different things. She's really, really smart. She sees the game in a different way. Um, she's a great teammate. That was the thing. I was around her and really about four young ladies on their team from last season, and it was amazing just watching her with them because they know what she is. They know what she does for their team and for their sport, and sometimes when you have that type of recognition, you can change, and she was – incredibly normal, incredibly uh, gracious to them and and defer to them a lot. It's amazing. And more eyes to basketball. It's, it's absolutely, awesome. Absolutely. I have two daughters. My oldest plays. And so, uh, look, man, I, I, I want all these women to be really good. I want a lot of eyes on it. And that was the thing that was so cool last year about the women's Final Four. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, it was more exciting than the men's. You know, well, because you look at all the storylines, the LSU women and – Mulkey and Angel Reese and that whole group. Obviously, South Carolina was undefeated. 
and you have that storyline, and, and then Caitlin, you know, and and uh, so it was. I think Virginia Tech was the fourth team yes. in it, and so it was amazing. It, it really was. I thought what the women did to start this season, they had some big time games, like big time matchups, right away to start the season to get even more eyeballs on it. I think one team, I think Notre Dame played South Carolina in London, I think, um, or Paris, one of the two. And so I, I think the things that they're doing to get more eyeballs on women's basketball is really cool. All right, Jeff, when we continue, I want to ask you about KJ and what makes him so important to your team as we continue Jeff Capel show on the Pitt Panthers radio network. It was a very special day here in the arena to, giving KJ a scholarship. Give us an idea of what he means to your team. Yeah, well, he, he, he means a lot. We've been very fortunate uh, the past two years, last year, to have he and Aiden Fish, and then this year to have KJ still around. Um, he is unbelievably energetic. He's incredibly positive. He's a great teammate. Um, he's a good player. Um, but just the energy and the positivity and the funniness and the joy that he brings every day to practice. Um, and he's going through something really tough in his personal life with his family, with his father. And, you know, he, he I don't know if many people knew, but, you know, the game we played before Christmas, IPFW, he wasn't there. He left right after finals to go down and just help the family and be there for his mom with his dad and, um, we missed him. Like We really missed him when he wasn't here, certainly understood it. Uh, but he's just a guy that you just want around you all the time. You've got to be proud of the love that the other guys have for him and, and understanding what he brings to the team. Absolutely, too. absolutely. And that this has been two years where guys appreciate it. Um, you know, they, you heard these guys talk. like They were emotional, you know, seeing him earn that. That's something that – he was able to earn, and I was really happy and proud to be able to let him know that today. All right, when we continue, let's talk Cardinals. Panthers and Cardinals, 12 o'clock on Saturday. You'll hear it right here as we continue on the Jeff Capel radio show on the Pitt Panthers radio network. Jeff, you look at this Louisville roster, and you start thinking, I mean, there's some talent. They gave <laughs> Texas a game. They gave Indiana a game. I mean, this is, this is potentially a very good team. They are talented. Like, they really are. I mean, they have two guys that are top 25 guys in the class when they came out. They have two other guys that are top 50, top 75 guys. They have really good size. I mean, they are a talented basketball team that, for whatever reason, have not been able to put it together, you know, to put it together. And I hope they put it together next week, <laughs> not on Saturday. And we, But we have to make them not put it together. We have to defend at a high level. We have to rebound. They're very good rebounding the basketball offense. They're one of the better offensive rebounding teams, and they really want to drive it and get paint and uh, try to attack that way. How do you limit the physicality, especially if Hatfield Hundley down there? Yeah, well, you know, we have to do our work early. Um, you know, we, 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 we may have to double them at times. Um, they have not, knock on wood, I'll knock right here, <laughs> they have not <laughs> shot the ball well, so hopefully that allows us to dig down a little bit to help a little bit more. But he's a load down there. He's a double-double guy, especially in the last four or five games. He's played really, really well. And they have guys like Clark <laughs> and James. Like they, they, they have James, Trey White. I mean, they're talented. They have a kid coming off the bench. Uh, he was, he's been hurt. Uh, I don't know if he'll be back. Dennis Evans, that was a top 30 guy in the class. Guy Clark was a top 25 guy. You know, Huntley Hatfield was a top 20 guy in his class when he came out. Um, so they have talent. They have really good size. And, you know, we know that's always been a tough place to play. I didn't realize when we won there last year, you know, I was told after the games the first time Pitt had won there. And so it's, it, it's a tough place to play. And, look, it's two teams that are desperate. That's the reality. Like, forget their overall record. We're 0-3 in the ACC. So are they. And so who wants it the most? Who's going to be hungriest? Who's going to be the most disciplined? And that team needs to be us. All right, Jeff, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Our thanks to Sam, to Amanda. Uh, to Joel as well, to Bub, to Jalen, and also to KJ. Pre-game at 11.30, tip-off at noon. This has been the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network.